Tēnā koutou katoa. Hello, it's lovely to be here. My name is Liz Dole and I have worked in child language acquisition and working with children who need support for child language development um, for too many years. <laughs> I'm not telling anymore. <laughs> and I've also worked at the Ministry of Education. My presentation today was about how children develop language and I wanted to talk about um, how parents, caregivers, whānau are involved in supporting children to develop language. One of the key points for me is the idea that children discover language. We can't really teach them language. They have to want to learn how to communicate. And the best people to help them are those that love them, are responsive to them, spend a lot of time with them, and are having interesting interactions around everyday things. Now, I just wanted to show you an example of how we look at language when we try and break it up into its components so we understand what it is we're talking about when we're helping children to learn language. So we need to have a context. And the context is about the activity that we're engaged in, the people involved in that. How, how familiar are the people? Um, what kind of language is required in terms of the formality or how familiar are the people? And so within this context, we then have these three components and they interrelate. And it's the integration of those um, behaviours and skills that give us a language that's effective, an effective communication. So we're thinking about what, what content, and that will vary according to the how um, complex the situation is or whether it's just bath time at home. Um, the why is our motivation. That is so important. We have to have a reason to communicate, to use language. And so we need to think a lot about motivation when we're engaging children in language learning. And the how is the form. So it could be words, it could be written language, it could be signing, it could be any of the languages that we speak. And there's about four things to think about. And the first tip or strategy is talk about what your child's interested in. So it's really important if your child's focused on an activity or thinking about something that you give them the language to go with it rather than take their um, attention into something totally different. What we know is that if a child is thinking or doing something, then their brain power, their cognition is centred on that. And if you come in then and say, oh... Tell mummy what happened on the way to school today. That's not what they're thinking about. They are thinking about what they're doing and it's important that we stay on that topic and provide them with language that is focused on what they're doing and what they're totally absorbed in at the time. The second thing is that we really want um, a balanced conversation so that we want um, not to be dominating as adults. Um, it's easy to dominate when your child is perhaps not expressing as often as you'd like them to, but to actually allow them time to initiate. So we want children to be active in our interactions with them, not passive. Um, we want them to participate um, by initiating turns, by asking questions, by making comments. And too often, we tend to dominate as adults and ask the questions and expect the child to respond or give instructions and expect them to do things. So it might not be that they're actually using words to ask a question, um, but it could be that they're looking at something inquiringly or that they're pointing to something and that we need to be kind of sensitive to those, um, their actual turns in the interaction and we can build on those. Um, and to do that, the third thing is we have to wait. And so if our children are not talking back to us or not interacting with us, we do tend to provide more language. We have to go against that tendency and to wait for a response. It might not be the response you're expecting. You know, you might have been looking for a word, but you might get a look or a gesture or a sign that you were not expecting if you wait. And we know that just by waiting, children will produce more responses and they'll contribute more to conversations. The fourth component is to how do you model the language. And so modelling is really important 
um, because you need to connect to what the child's doing and help them to remember words so that they can understand them in the future and use them. The first thing we need to think about is how are we going to contextualise the language so it's got to be something familiar the child can connect to. And those connections are laid down in the storage area of our brain so that when we need to remember that word again, um, we've got these connections to help us. And they happen in split seconds. So you know that tip of the tongue idea where you think, oh, I know that word. And then someone will say something about where they've seen whatever it is you're trying to remember and you think, yep, got it. Because those connections are laid down neurologically. The essential thing is to provide language stimulation to the child, whatever form that takes. The priority is for as much exposure as possible. The child can try different things and choose a path that works for them, which is fine. The important thing is to give them the language exposure that their growing brains are craving at that time. Parents sometimes think that their child is not ready for these multiple languages, but we were saying they're absolutely ready for more than one language. The take home message for parents is, you know, whatever language is effective for your child is the one to be using with them. And um, I think the interest that we have now in New Zealand Sign Language means that there'll be more opportunities for children to have choices in terms of spoken language and sign language. And the willingness of parents to actually learn sign language and to provide that as an option for their child is, is amazing and, and quite a change in the last 10 years I've noticed.